<clears throat> good evening, Yama. Good evening, Empress T. How are you guys doing? Let me see if my mic is um, testing, testing. Can you hear me? Hello? Okay. All right, sounds good. All right. One more thing. Let me just give me one second. Yamo, good evening. Okay, let's see how this light here is going. We don't want it too dark, but we don't want too much light. All right, give me one second. Let me get my phone. Okay. So how is everybody doing for Black History Month? Yes, we hear you. Very good, very good. Yes, I hope the um, connection stays on. I decide to trick it or trick whatever omen is causing the live to get bad every week. So I decide not to announce the live early. That was a, a plan of mine. So, um, so yes, um, I'm very much interested in um, colon cancer. And especially when I realized that African-Americans are on top of that list, like a lot of other diseases. So I decided to delve into it a little bit. Any uh, you guys have anything you want to share? What's your thoughts on colon cancer? You guys are in healthcare. You mustn't know a little bit something. What do you think? Between men and women, um, what's the prevalence of colon cancer? Increased cases of younger people. Oh, that's interesting. Um, we know that Yamo, it says it's probably higher in men than in women. Uh, probably not much higher, probably a little higher, but um, not a lot higher um, in comparison to something like breast cancer and prostate cancer. It kinds of, you know, very close. And yes, I have heard of men coming down with it more than women. Um, um, and I, I'm interested in it too, because I have a brother that supposedly that's what he died from, um, from Dan. That's what I was told Dan had. So, um, by the age of 50, um, they suggest um, we should get, um, co um, what you call it, um, colonoscopy. 
I'm missing my trend of thought. Um, but if you have a first degree relative that had colon cancer, they suggest you have it 10 years um, earlier than when that person was diagnosed. So say, for example, you had a father or brother or sister, sisters that had colon cancer at age 50. They suggest you get a colonoscopy and get screened for colon cancer at age 40. Okay. Most of the people who have colon cancer, um, it's asymptomatic. So they it takes a while before they find out. And colon cancer, you can have a polyp, um, like let's say you have a polyp now, probably 10 years before it takes, um, it turns into cancer. It's a slow growing thing. But the good news that I found out is that colon cancer, it's treatable even up to the third um, stage, stage three. It's easy, easier to treat. And if you remove the polyp, um, the sooner you remove that polyp, the better your prognosis will be. Um, so that is, that is good to know. Okay, let me see anything else. We, that, that men higher risk, women higher risk. Yes, but is, are, are you surprised that African Americans have colon cancer more than the, the other counterparts? Hi, Monica, good night. How are you? You just miss me. I just said um, I was just telling Yamo and Empress that I am very much interested in colon cancer because I think that's what Dan died from, colon cancer. So being he's a first degree relative, I am, you know, thinking that we need to keep that in mind. Good so far, good, 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 nice. So welcome. Um, I'm not good at speaking and I'm um, typing at the same time. Um, uh, you, Mr. Yamo, I'm not gonna put the bit there. I'm just gonna put Yamo and uh, uh, an empress. Yeah. So it's showing, why is showing only two people watching? Yama went, who, who is not there? Um, yes. Um, so I was saying that Don died from prostate cancer. And so that's something that I always have in mind that we need to um, keep abreast of and um, keep ourselves checked. Okay, Yamo still there. Um, no diet, Empress, no diet plays a major factor. Yes, Empress T, diet plays a, a, a very important factor in Prostate, I'm um, not prostate, colon cancer. High fiber. Um, I was listening to a doctor this evening. Um, Dr. Um, Bolsiewicz. And Dr. Bolsiewicz gave five tips to help prevent colon cancer. High fiber di diet, any kind of plant-based diet. A matter of fact, he cited in his presentation that there, there was a study done out in California on seven-day Adventist um, members that usually are on vegan or high plant diet. 
and they found that the prevalence of prostate cancer was very minimal. Um, they also did study in India and in Africa, and they found out that the, Af the Blacks that are in Africa and the Indians, they have less chance of coming down with prostate cancer because of their diet. But when they research the African Americans in the United States, there was a stark difference. And so there is a linkage between diet and, um, and colon cancer. They found out that red meat and processed uh, meats, balonies and all those things are one of the main culprit in a study that they did. Um, they found out that the bacteria that lives in the gut loves plant foods, that they go crazy. When you eat a meal that has high fiber, they are very happy. And so there goes the link. What was the five things again? I know diet. Um, Oh, getting your, your, your colonoscopy done um, screen, getting screened for colonoscopy. Now, there is other medical professionals out there that don't agree with getting the colonoscopy because there are some people who think the colonoscopy does a lot of harm. So what I would suggest is that individuals get screened first. There is a test called a Cologuard, and that's what I took. They, they, there's two screening tests. There's stool for guayac. Now, the guayac test, is, is, it's not really reliable because it doesn't detect the entire colon, um, bleeding in the entire colon, but it's a start. But the colorector, um, the Cologuard test is a DNA test. And um, they have, you know, it's not 100% reliable as far as catching all the polyps and the, the colon cancer, but it's very high. It's up in the 90s, 90 something. I think that's good. Anything up in 90s is good. And then you have sigmoidoscopy. The thing with sigmoidoscopy is that it only detects um, cancer or polyps that's going to be in the left side of the um, colon um, because it doesn't, the, that device doesn't go all the way through the colon. But the colonoscopy does. But um, there are um, other professionals that feel that um, it tears up the, the, the intestine and it does a lot of harm. But, you know, I think that's a judgment call on everybody to make their decision. So um, um, I think that is that so far, but it's encouraging to know that if you catch it early, you can um, save your life. It's like a 90 something percent chance. Um, um, the research that I did that say, if you catch it when it's in stage one and stage one is 90, like 98% chance of not getting cancer. Stage two is good. Three, not so good, but they can work with three. When it gets to stage four is when it is really bad because stage four is when they, um, the, the cancer metastasize and goes to the liver, the brain, the lungs and the lymphatic system. So um, uh, March, March is coming up. March is National Colon Cancer Month. Uh, and not every disease partly have its, its month and I'm not up to date apart from breast cancer awareness. I'm not up on the rest, but um, I found out March is um, Colon Cancer Month. So, uh, at least the screen um, should be done. Anything else you guys want to check to to to?
to um share or anything what are the symptoms okay that's a good question monica um one of this first symptom why am i talking so high hmm. one of the first symptom for colon cancer is bleeding when you pass your stool um some people have bloody stool some it's a black tarry stool and the stool can take different different forms some people will have diarrhea and some will have constipation they'll fluctuate between diarrhea and uh, and um and constipation and that's why sometimes it goes unnoticed because there are other conditions that can happen um, that cause those things. So sometimes it's attributed to something else when it's in fact colon cancer. Other symptoms of colon cam um, cancer is polyps. And that's what is detected when they do the colonoscopy. They can, the colonoscopy is like a little camera that they send through the rectum, right up through the colon, and they can watch it. I have a video I'm making, and you'll actually see them sit and watching the intestine inside of um, the person. So other changes um, in the, the, um, the, the, the colon is that, um, some people, if they are backed up, they might, some people, when they have it real bad, they'll have obstruction. So they'll, when you, the person passes their feces, it is thin. They call it pencil shaped. So instead of having a full bowel movement, it's just a, a, a slim, meager looking stool. That's another um, eye opener that um, one should be looking for. Sometimes there is complete blockage. That's when the tumor, the polyps grow and turn into a tumor and it blocks the entire um, colon. In that case, the person will be vomiting because not only the stool that is gonna be backed up, gas that you normally pass is gonna um, get backed up and fluid so you'll have extended stomach your, your belly gonna like you 10 months pregnant <laughs> if that there's such a thing and the gas gonna um, back up so that will cause nausea and vomiting um let me see other symptoms pain there is usually pain and it, depending on where the cancer is you'll experience the pain in that area of the abdomen. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, I think those are fatigue and weight loss. Yes. Because some people who have colon cancer, they'll be, they'll be bleeding. So if you're bleeding, you're going to become anemic. So that's one of the, the symptoms. And some people, you're, um, they can't digest their food properly, so they lose weight. So any kind of weight loss, um, sudden weight loss without you dieting or so on, is a high opener. And of course, I said earlier, it sometimes is symptomatic. So you don't, you just progress normally and think everything is okay. All right, so thanks for asking that question, Monica. That's a good question. Um, diagnosis. How they diagnose um, the, the colon cancer? Uh, I just mentioned earlier that they, you can do the screens like the guayac or occult blood test. You can also do the color guard. You can do a colonoscopy. You can do a sigmoidoscopy 
And you also have a test called CEA that is done in the laboratory. And the CEA is done as a baseline because it gives you the um, baseline measurement and they do that periodically, like every three months or so. And if the value is increasing, that means it's either you have the, the tumor is growing or if you had surgery and you went in remission and what have you, but they do the tests to monitor, keep monitoring you because if they see the value start going back up, they know the, the tumor has um, returned. They also can do CAT scan. And um, the CAT scan is more of a, a, a in intermediate test where once they know you have it and so on, the doctor can look at it and they can help to stage, see what stage um, the cancer is in um, by looking at it. They usually back in the day give, give barium enemas. They rarely do that for colon cancer nowadays because colon cancer, um, the, bar the barium enema doesn't detect early colon cancer. It's usually when it's in um, the metastasis stage, that, that's when it is um, useful. So they, they don't want to wait that late. Um, does the occult blood test show blood in stool automatically means cancer? No, because diet, whatever you eat, there are certain things like beet and so on. If you eat those things and red meat, it can cause false positive. So um, not because your occult blood is positive, it may not be blood unless um, you restricted your diet. And usually the doctor will do the occult blood several times. Sometimes, you know, when I was working in the laboratory, they will do them three at a time. Or if they don't do them three at a time, they'll send the patient home. They'll do one while the patient is there in the facility then they send the patient home and the patient comes back another time with three, two other times with two different samples um, to pick it up. But my experience with Guayac is that it's not reliable, especially if it's collected by the doctors. And that reason why I'm saying that usually they use a glove finger to collect the specimen. And that's not a very good comprehensive specimen because where the part of the stool that the, the, the glove finger touch may not be, you know, the, the, the part that blood is on. So it's a good sample needs where you take little parts of the stool from different areas and put it on the card. So most of the times we prefer in the laboratory that the specimen carries this, the patient, I'm sorry, carries the specimen in a cup or so, and then we will put it on the, the, the um, envelope ourselves. So yes, there's a lot of false positives and so on. Yes, so let me reply to TT there. Um, uh oh, I'm not an, I'm not a, re, a, a good typist. There, can be false positives. So that's the answer to the, that question. Okay, so um, 
that's that okay what else um so let me see what else i want to share with you guys um the, the risk factors what are the risk factors and again you know some things are on every list as risk factor <clears throat> talking about smoking that's a risk factor obesity alcohol dietary lifestyle um lifestyles when your diet is low in fiber and excessive processed meat that is a risk factor inflammatory conditions there are certain syndromes that people have and certain diseases like crohn's syndrome um crohn's and ulcerative colitis those um individuals who suffer from those conditions are very much likely to come down with colon cancer also i mentioned before age if you are over 50 years of age your risk increase i also mentioned <clears throat> family history if you have parents or siblings that had uh, um colon cancer you that increases your chance of getting it um genetics there are some syndromes this example is torcott syndrome gardner syndrome lynch syndrome there are several conditions that are genetically um, based and if you inherit those the genes to those syndromes or if you have the syndrome that increases your chance know that t plays a major factor okay what else i can see so those are the the risk factors um let me see the statistic is that colon cancer is the third highest cancer in the United States. And um, my research, I found out that it's fourth in the world, but in the United States, it's the third highest cancer that um, Americans come down with. Okay, so um, what else? um i already said that it is african americans have it the most um in the population um the stage let's start in um and all staging is is um the pathologist will um they'll take biopsies and they'll look at the, the cancer to determine how far along it is. So um, the way this, the cancer is staged is they have stage one, two, three, four. And each of those stages have what I call sub-stages. I don't want to get bogged down with the technical terms and so on. So that's why I call them sub-stages. So in stage one, there are like four different classifications so you have when the um tumor in invasion is only in the sub mucosa i know tanisia know this stuff because you know she's a histologist so she knows more than i do in this um i mean princess t Okay, so you also have the invasion into the muscularis um, propria. That is a, another classification under stage one. You have invasion to the muscularis propria and the serosa. And then the final classification under stage one is invasion into adjacent organs and structures. So we're talking about mostly the liver and 
other organs, usually it, it um, metastasizes and reaches the, the anus where you'll have rectal, um, colorectal cancer um, developing. Then stage two, stage two has three classifications. Um, you have a stage where no regional node is involved. So none of the um, lymph nodes have not, um, um, none of the lymph nodes do not have cancer. Then you have this stage where it metastasizes into one to three regional nodes. And then the third stage under, the third classification under stage two, it metastasizes into four or more regional nodes. So that's stage one and two. And from what I got to find out in my research, those two stage are easy to take care of, okay? Because they, all they'll do is remove the polyp. Um, okay, stage three is not that good, but still they am um, told, all the doctors I listened to said they still can work with stage three. In that stage, no distant metastasis has not um, occurred as yet. And what they mean by distant metastasis, specifically they are talking about the brain and the lungs, all right? Um, local metastasis, they would define the um, metastasis to the liver as local. All right, so standard stage three, there is distant metastasis. And I already just explained that. That's when the cancer spread and it circulates and reach your brain and your lungs. So that's not good. And stage four is a big kahuna in the room. <laughs> in case Monica not familiar with my terminology, um, you know, it's the big elephant. When I say the big kahuna, I mean the big elephant in the room. So that is when the cancer has metastasized and it has spread to the brains, the lungs, the liver, and the lymphatic system. So at that time, they only can provide palliative care because there isn't anything they can do. So that is why it's so important for us to screen and more importantly, like I said, this year is a year of health for me. We need to watch what we're eating. Probably it's not so, you know, it's probably it's a blessing that oxtail and beef and all these things are expensive because we, we, we don't need to eat so much of it anyway. You see what I'm saying? And if we stick to plants, all our veggie, those are what we need to go back to. That's what we used to eat in, back in the day, you know, before we became carnivores. And I'm not talking against meat or so on, but we need to make conscious effort to curve our diet. If I know I'm going to die from something, I would rather cut back from eating it um in comparison to taking all the bad medicines that have side effects and that's gonna ruin you know ruin me any anyway okay um good evening hello how are you jay jake ferguson hi welcome to the discussion we're talking about colon cancer and we're kind of sharing thoughts here. It's not anything formal, um, but thanks for dropping by. If you have any input on the topic, I would, uh, you know, you're welcome to type whatever you would like to contribute. But we're talking about diet, and it's very alarming to see that African Americans are on the top of that list among other 
um, diseases where we are on the top. So it's very concerning and we need to do whatever we can. If it's outside our power to do something, it's just outside. I can see if you have the genetic disposition to come down with a, a condition. But if you don't, and you can modify your diet, eat healthy, exercise, cut out smoking, too much alcohol and all that, all those excess things that we don't really de derive any nutritional value from, I think it's a good thing. So um, I, I, I think, you know, we can save a lot, save a lot of money too. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> what else? Um, I think I, I covered most of, okay. So I have summarized from Dr. Buzzywick. Um, discussion, the five ways to prevent colon cancer. And so the first one he listed is colonoscopy. The earlier you get your colonoscopy done, um, the better. And they, I think most medical um, professionals recommend age 50, unless you have a sibling or a, a parent first degree relative that had colon cancer, then you need to do it 10 years earlier than when that person was diagnosed. The second thing, eliminate red meat and processed meats. And I know that a lot of the foods that we have um, are some way or the other is processed. Even the fresh fruits and vegetables, once they, they reap them, they put all kind of chemicals and stuff on them to prevent them from go bad and to protect them from shipping, which to me, I just call that contaminating the food. So um, we have to watch whatever we are eating. The third recommendation by Dr. Bossiewicz is plant-based diet. All the veggies, green leafy veggie and fruits and all that, we can eat those in, our, in abundance because like he said, the bacteria, the good bacteria that are in our gut, they have a ball when they get those foods. Those are what they like. Eat fermented foods, eat stuff that is coming from the ground. That's what our, uh, our tree, coming from a tree or the ground. That's how I like to put it. And the fourth thing, fiber. Fiber again, I'm going to say that's plant-based. Eat all the fiber you can get because it's shown that this cuts down incidence of colon cancer. Oh, one important thing I forgot. It's a good thing I checked the list. Turmeric, that's the goal of food. Alexia, good night, Alexis. Alexia, hi, good night. Oh, hi, Angel, sweetie, how are you? Good, good. <clears throat> We're here discussing um, colon cancer and giving suggestions. Uh, I know you're, you're, you're studying in the medical field. What's your take on colon cancer? Have you studied anything yet about colon cancer? Leave something in the comment, what you know about colon cancer or so on. So turmeric, Dr. Bus, Whisk. sometimes his name, his name is a thong tire. But he suggests we eat turmeric morning, noon, and night if we can. And that's another study that was um, done on Indians. And we know that Indians are famous for curry dishes. 
And we as Jamaicans, we get a lot of our cultural um, cooking of curry from the Indians. Curry, the, um, one of the ingredients in curry is a cancer fighting, in, um, good, interesting topic. Yes, dear. Yes. So you can't eat too much curry. And if you, you're a person who doesn't cook a lot, they have supplements. Just the other day, I bought a bottle of the, the, the capsules, um, curry capsules. So eat all the curry you can eat. <laughs> and if you don't cook and you don't get to cook enough curry, eat, take the supplement because that is found. They have done so much research. Uh, a matter of fact, this is my little, one of my health Bible. Uh, and um, Alexia, I don't want, I don't like calling people their real name on the, the live. So I, and most people don't know, I must say Angel then, or Alexia. I don't want to uh, give away people's name. Let me share with you a little bit from this book, which is my Bible. It's called Cancer Step Outside the Box. And it's written by Ty Bollinger. And in my post last week, I discussed the, medicine, the medicinal value of turmeric. So let me give you a little quote from his book on the medicinal value of turmeric. Now, most of us say turmeric, but cum, um, curcumin is one of the popular names for it. So if you hear that name, it's the same turmeric. And turmeric is what they used to make curry with, OK? So they said, he said in his book that turmeric is known as the golden spice of life and has been used in Indian cuisine for thousands of years. As a matter of fact, it is impossible to think of Indian food without turmeric. We know that. He says another cancer, uh, anti-cancer property of curcumin, which is the same term, turmeric, is that it is a powerful antioxidant. It can therefore protect our bodies from free radicals that damage DNA. This is also why turmeric, which contains curcumin, can be used for preserving food. Tests in Germany reported in the Journal of Pharmacy and Pharmacology in July 2003 found that all factions of the turmeric extract preparation prohibited pronounced antioxidant activity. Turmeric ex extract tested more potent than garlic, devil's claw, and salmon, salmon oil. Okay, so you see how good um, that is? Um, in January 2007, in the issue of Journal of Clinical Immunology, scientists at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston stated, curcumin can suppress tumor initiation, promotion, and metastasis. So that, see, so it prevents um, tumor from spreading. It says curcumin also can protect cells against xanos estrogen because it can fit to the same receptor as estrogen or estrogen mimicking chemicals. So I don't want to bore you with too much reading, but curcumin, it's one of my superfoods. And if you listen to my podcast, I have access to that book. Yes, and I, I know Nazi have that, that book, um, Angel. She's the one that um, introduced me to this book several years ago. 
And uh, she told me a few weeks ago that this author has a new edition and I'm going to look it up and buy it. So I, I love this book. So what I'm saying, guys, we need to educate ourselves on, you know, the things that are beneficial. Um, because it doesn't make no sense. We spend a lot of money on pharmacological, you know, garbage, I'm going to call some of them. I mean, some are very necessary. We need certain medicine. But the most of them that they are giving us is just to fatten the pockets of big pharma. Okay, good, good. Thumbs up. But oh, oh, let me see if I can find I'm not savvy like you, Angel, because I, I didn't even know that I could find uh, emojis on here. Oh, yeah, there's emojis, food. Okay, that's good. Okay, I want a smiling emoji. Yeah. Thank you, Angel. I didn't realize that I had emojis at the bottom. You see? Ah, ah. So how comes nobody ain't use no emoji on here? Uh, let me see if they have purple emojis. No, purple is my favorite color. No. Okay, that's so much for emojis. <laughs> And how do I like reply to somebody? Let's say if I want to do a reply, send a, a, an emoji back to somebody. I have to go build up my my uh, my skills in on using live. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can call. Yeah, all right. I'm good. Interesting topic. I have access to that book. That that that's so much. Okay, so I have our about 12 more minutes online. So any any other input from anybody else? Um this week, no. What what do I have in this? I think, what, was it garlic? I don't remember if it's garlic I have as a superfood in, in the podcast for Sunday. I, I think so. I think it's garlic. Yeah, there are a lot of foods that we take for granted. And they are so, so healthy and good for us. Um, Talking about ginger. Ginger is another very good food to eat. A lot of ginger. The thing is, heat destroys the, the um, potent substances in these foods. So we shouldn't cook too much of these things. Or if we do cook them, like if we're making tea, we should boil up the water and then pour the water on, on them. Don't just put them in the pan and boil it um, because then we, you ruin the active ingredients that's in it. Uh, I'm, I'm in trouble. I'm, I open up the emoji and I can close it back. Um, let me see here. Is that... How do I close this thing back? <laughs> I can't close. Okay, now it's closed. Okay, I think it's closed. Uh, uh, uh. It's not closing. I'm in trouble. Why I can't get rid of the emojis? Uh, 
Because then I can see the screen. Okay, now I, I, I can see it. Okay. So, JQ. Is this, is JQ? Hi, is this? Is this JQ that I know? Is this my cousin JQ? I'm not familiar with the last name, but that's what it looks like. Hey. Um, Angel, Angel I'm in trouble. I can't close back the emojis. <laughs> ah. Okay. Anyhow, Monica. Okay, that's something already. Um, let me see what my thanks. Impressed. Let me see if I. Yeah, now I'm seeing the comments. Monica Stewart. No, I'm not. Um, I I miss Monica. Um, when she said, no, I'm not, uh, anyhow, you guys, this is a learning thing for me because usually I've been doing lives, but I haven't gotten so much participation and I thank you guys very much because now I have to learn to read and not just run in my mouth, keep running my mouth along because i need to learn to read the screen and get familiar with the stuff that can be done and auto close back things that i open let me see something because i just did the um emoji thing and i can't get it to disappear and it covers up the the screen so I might just have to push, keep pushing up that. Yamo and Empress T. Oh, increased cases of younger and may. Okay, that's already, I saw that. So uh, I'm having a dilemma with the, the screen. Yeah. So next week, um, what did I say I was going to cover next week? Just a little bit of anticipation. Probably if you guys have time and you can cover, you have a topic that you want to discuss, or if anybody want to come on as a guest and talk about any medical condition or so on, um, the floor is always open. This is an interactive discussion, so it's not just to talk. I am encouraging other participants to contribute to if you know um, about an illness or some kind of disease and you want to um, present it. Um, you have the opportunity to do that too. Okay. Okay, now I see I sent the that to them okay you're welcome <laughs> okay i just see how to send that oh gosh monica said a purple purple what this is monica <laughs> uh, i drink turmeric and ginger together that is good that's good monica you know what right now i'm having ginger you see in my my mug I, i'm drinking ginger right now Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Um I miss my trend as far as what I was supposed to um cover next week. Um I don't remember. I think I said it in my podcast that I'm preparing. 
um, what I don't remember right now. But um, you guys should tune in tomorrow. Um, I have a podcast that I put up every Sunday between 9 and 10 p.m. It should be uploaded. And you can download it from Spotify or whatever podcasts um, so, um, apps you have, you can use. But I use Anchor and Anchor is owned by Spotify. And I think I'm on Google, their podcast too. Um, I signed up for iTunes. I don't know if it's uploaded there yet. But what I do in the podcast is I have a broadcast where I come on and I talk about health conditions like tonight I'm talking about colon cancer. So that will go in tomorrow's podcast. And that segment of the podcast is called Health Bulletin. Then I have a segment <clears throat> called your views in your views it's any current event that's going on or if i have a guest speak or if somebody want to call in and so on um I, i'll have it that set up then i have a segment i call ground bottom and like angel and know what I'm talking about when I say, I think Angel should know ground bottom up our area. And ground bottom was a very fertile place where the farmers, when they plant food in ground bottom, they yam them big like me and you. Everything come from ground bottom, so nice and, you know, um, beautiful. So that's why I call my segment Ground Bottom. So in Ground Bottom is where I discuss some natural food. And that's where I feature the superfood every week. Then I might have some announcement. And then after that, I have a segment called Code Purple. And in Code Purple, I feature missing children. Um, could be missing adults too, especially elderly, um, pay, um, elderly um, residents, because sometimes the elderly, they have dementia and they walk away or they have Alzheimer and they stray away and their relatives can't find them. So those are um, the individuals I like to feature on that missing segment. So every week, um i'll broadcast that and it's on spotify so to you guys tune into that and if anybody wants to you know um come on as a guest i cannot share my um platform with you and we discuss a topic or so on that would be very nice so guys Unless you guys have something to say, I'm out of stuff to say. Um, this live usually go for an hour. So please join me next Saturday night at 8 p.m. again. Every week at 8 p.m. I go live on YouTube. And at 9 p.m. I upload on my podcast. So... Put that date on your calendar. It's been a pleasure. It's been so nice to see, well, not see, but actually hear and um, see a lot of, you know, familiar individuals join me and support me tonight. It feels real good that, you know, you guys have my back and I appreciate you and share, share the, um, the channel. Um, there's so much of um, what I call drama and bad things going that people use the internet for. And I'm not knocking those channels because, you know, everybody have their place. But when it comes on to our health, this is my crusade. 
I want to be a champion for the children, children that are being abused. And I want to raise awareness to health. There are so many conditions that are affecting us, especially us black people. And they, it doesn't have to be that way. If we educate ourselves, you know, take a few minutes to learn something. YouTube is a wonderful tool. It's like an encyclopedia. There is a wealth of information, but we just have to take a little bit of time out and learn something. And when we learn it, share. Knowledge doesn't make sense if just you alone have it. Share it with somebody. Each one teach the other. And that's my motto. So um, thanks again for coming, guys. And bye-bye. I love you guys. And invite somebody for next week. Okay. Um, thanks for coming. And for once, thank you, Lord, the, 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 the internet did not act up. So Empress T does, oh, Empress T is gone and Yamo probably is gone. Are you gone, Yamo? Good night. Love the kids for me, Yamo. He probably left. I didn't see Brand Muffin tonight. Hi, Brand Muffin. Yamo, say hi to Brand Muffin for me. Okay. All right, guys. Good night. Thanks again. Angel, good night. I talk to you. Say hi to, to Dell and everybody. Give them my love. All right. Good night. Monica, good night. Are you still there? All right. Good night, everybody.